Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl, Cranky. <clears throat> I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. I ho and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. I don't know what that was. Um, whatever. Okay, so like I really need to... Do I really like need to moisturize my hair? I guess I do. I just... I like it off. Um, it's not that I'm lazy. I don't know what it is, but I just... I think I'm, I'm trying to eradicate an itch. So... Like, the less I moisturize, the less I itch, you know what I mean? No more that. Anyway, what's up? Let me just put caveats out there. Um, before I do that, it's the 12th of December, 2023. It is a Tuesday, what's up? However, by the time you see this, it'll probably be, like, Thursday or something. I don't know, whatever. Um, because I, like, um, that's how I edit. Mm, okay, cool. Righto. It is Tuesday, the 12th of December, and that's relevant. Let's first put some caveats out there. I'm wearing up my makeup, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Probably. Highly likely. Yeah, and if that's the case, it's gonna keep bouncing or falling off my face. Doesn't really matter. Like, really, I'm not too ouchy about that. Um, I just want you to look out for the fact that it's an app and not the real deal. Number two, my captions are a little bit messed up in the sense that they're not always accurate. I have not yet arrived at a place in my life where I can afford to hire an editor. And so, like, that'd be a thing. Mm. So they're always just going to stick around doing that thing. I'm not taking them out because I find them cute. I find them adorable. Moving on. Don't have any other captions other than maybe I might get a speech lag later. I'm not really sure, but we'll see. It's currently 1910. No, not the year. I know. I always make that joke and it's like so not funny because the situation right now is kind of dire so i'm gonna ask some my jokes but like whatever it's 1910 it's not so hot anymore plus today was not too hot a day anyway so that's why i don't anticipate i will be getting speech lags i will however every so often be looking over there at the computer because i have got to do edits alongside work here because you know i don't have the leisure of just kind of um doing one thing at a time i gotta multitask and i'm not even all that good at it apparently women are not that great because when i'm multitasking i can't piece my words together in a way that is coherent um so look out for that too moving on we're gonna talk about something dire something serious something extreme and something <laughs> that um I, i've been raising on a loop like perpetually my melang Y'all know I have a bone to pick with witches. I don't like them. I'm not even trying to hide it, you know what? I feel as if though I've just used a euphemism over there, like when I said I don't like them. It's more like I hate them. Purple passion and everything. And uh, the reason why I've even gotten to this place is because of 10 years of attrition. 10 years of extreme pressure and instead of them producing pulp, I'd rather just become a diamond and now that I'm a diamond, only other diamonds can cut me. However, being as fluffy as they are, they're still nonetheless trying to they're still nonetheless trying to finish me off. And in so trying to finish me off are finishing themselves off in my heart. Not that I am the be all and end all of matter, whether or not she cares about you, but I am one of many people that they lose. And so ultimately when you lose everybody that's ever loved you, that's when it starts to matter that somebody doesn't like you. So I'm just gonna go on right ahead and grab that salt in your itchy wounds and be like, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. Like ten times until it hurts. Why? Because you've lost ten other people. Allow me to just put this out there. But the reason why I can't stand them, I resent them, I want nothing to do with them is because they've gaslit me for like 10 years and cost me my entire future. They've also targeted me quite violently because I am a Christian, so combination of things really i was their loved one and on top of that i just had to go on right ahead and get born again meaning that i would actually be fighting what they're doing and being a warrior and everything that has then also awarded me them being warriors so it's like we're on opposite sides of the battlefield so they can't stand me as a result of them not being able to stand me i've got too much lipstick that i can literally taste uh, with them not being able to stand me, they now are actually trying to kill me. There's like a whole bunch of crazy men. Like dirty little monsters hanging out in some coven in this country. It's like Azanka Horoma Loloya, but anyway, they went. Yeah, they're trying to finish me off, mow me to the ground, except the way that they feel right now where I'm concerned is they're hitting one of those, you know, bobble heads in the car, like as you're driving in the blazing sun with no sunscreen. And because you're bored in traffic and you're losing all of your colleagues, you then just go on right ahead and look at that bubble head and just knock on it because you're bored and you're losing your collagen and then it just does that and as you drive it then bubbles head all over again until you chill like in a still place park your vehicle and then the bubble head is not moving anymore because there's nothing to knock it and bash it in its neck is like all you know yeah whatever mm. 
they hit me like a bobblehead. They feel frustrated by the fact that I'm a bobblehead because when they hit me, I'm supposed to die. I'm supposed to get knocked over. My head is supposed to be like the head of the servants in Alice in Wonderland killed by the Queen of Hearts off with their heads. I'm supposed to die and I don't. All that I do is just bobble my head, bobble my head, bobble my head. And then when I get to a still place, I don't eat be still and know that I am God. I don't even bobble my head anymore. But I get that I'm a bobblehead. They try to hit me to death, but I just bobble head. They try to mow me to the ground, but I just kind of spring right back up again. I'm like those frustrating games at the arcade with like the hammer. And they just, these little funny little monsters, is it green? They keep popping out and you're like, why? And you just miss them and miss them until you don't get the teddy bear. Yeah, bafunuk popangam. They want to like hit a home run, home run or something with a Christian woman. And they feel frustrated because they pay a whole bunch of money to put in that little slot machine at the arcade. Only for them to get no targets hit. And so they don't get to go home with the big fluffy teddy bear. They just lose a whole bunch of shiny coins having wasted money on the teddy bear. So I don't like them. They don't like like me I guess we're even except no we're not even why because I'm actually lovable and I have not burned bridges bridges have been burned against me meaning that I'm the one here with the one up on you and so being the one here with the one up on you they then are frustrated by the fact that I'm likable lovable however mistreated while they are unlovable unlikable and however rightly treated evidencing them as ones who are an abomination and a travesty and my particular situation being absolutely wrong okay the bible says the lord can't stand the condemnation of the righteous and the acquittal of the wicked and they are the wicked that is being acquitted they would love to imagine that that's okay because people are cool with them but they're not they can't be why because god is not a man that should lie son a man to change his mind and so that means that the bible is true and if the bible is true it means that people are not happy when the wicked reign and rule yeah, because that's what the Bible says. When a wicked man takes a position of leadership in the country, everybody's just out here crying. They're mourning. But then when good people do a better thing and they thrive and they succeed, everybody rejoices. Meaning that my sorrow, my sadness, my being buried in like a whole dungeon is a sight for sore eyes for South Africa. The country is reeling. It is mourning, even though they don't know they're in tears. And they're about to find out in the worst way because the Lord is going to come and grab his babies and realize, shall South Africa then on their they see that they literally killed Christians unawares to themselves because witches were running the show. Churches will then wake up from their incredible slumber after being defibrillated by the rapture to see that they were lost and stuff and that they were playing games. I don't know how many times I've been saying I get some of South Africa churches in South Africa are like little kiddies games. It's like we're all seven all the way going to the age of maybe 12, 15 and Ridala Gom Gom Banana, maybe Eggy, I don't know, Chicago, make your pink, Black Mamba D name. Mm. Do you Scotch? Mm. And it's not really church. If it was church, the country would not be looking like this. Which is, listen up, okay? Evidences are now sprawling, crawling, creeping all up in the skirt, up it anyway, of the media. Mm. Of the fact that South Africa has been taken over by a nefarious conglomerate. La loyale daoui. And I don't even know what to do anymore, except I guess I shall rock up every single day and have a conversation because it's just what I do. I don't like you. And really, who likes anyone that's trying to kill them? And if at all you come at me with a flying kick, I don't know. I'm in the sky, seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus. So it's going to be landing on some air. And so although, have you ever tried to shabby face or something that kind of ducks you, you then with all that impetus and that force end up spinning on the spot. So get like the just spinning on the spot trying to kick me because I'm in the sky and therefore whatever it is that you see chilling here is an optical illusion I'm totally like a hologram and given that I am a hologram you're just gonna keep on kicking 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 and at the end of the day you're just gonna spin on the spot and look really weird on the other day on the other side and so because I just feel as if they'll stop making a clown and a joke out of yourself I'm not going anywhere I'm getting raptured, hallelujah, River Jordan, that's what we're doing. I'm like Enoch, I walk with God and so he takes me. I'm not going anywhere. However, those of you who are trying to take me somewhere, like I said, hologram much, hit it, kick it, do what you want and land in a ditch. You're going to Sheol. Galagarbenda, which is, this is why I don't like you. Libulele Zahara. It's the very same thing that I've been saying, like for a minute. I've been speaking. I'm going to be that taboo girl. Yeah, I'm going to use the celebrity that just passed away in this country. Evidences are crawling, creeping all up in South African walls, like cockroaches at night. And then when you switch on the light, they scatter, acting as if though they're not there. Mm. 
that Bologna has taken over South Africa. Like, it's clear. It's like a whole Formula One Grand Prix race where witches are trying to see who can kill the most people. How can I self control the Darwin? According to um, Galatians 5, the fruit of the sinful nature among them is sorceries, right? And uh, there's also like rivalries, dissensions, envies, jealousies, orgies, whatever, just random stuff that people do when they don't know God. Mm. And when you magnify in those, because I get to be orata satane or a lawyer, and so you are demon possessed, that's what's good. Yeah, you then just go on right ahead and kill people because they got married. I will tell the story over and over and over again, and I will keep on telling you tomorrow and the next day for as long as it takes for me to, you know, be snatched up in some inner and God takes me my melan when I was a little bit back in the day when I was young I'm still young but not that young because people saw it fit to grab a whole decade of my life and put me nowhere I guess Zahara I don't just get killed Kari Clara but I got a bone to pick with the death of Zahara and this is what in the world under heaven I'm going to throw out there Luna Lita wing South Africa Wazy Gang it's over Hi, kids, a bit of what you anticipate is going to be a different thing tomorrow because you're just messing up your own nation. And given that they're do you're doing that on a multiplier, you're then mess messing up like the planet. And with the planet gone, where do you have to sit exactly? Where are you going to hang your coat? I spoke about that the other day. How does that witches go on right ahead to just decimate? Like, what's up? They got doom, their ecosystem, hoping that being the flies that they are, they're not going to also drop dead from it. Like, where are you going to hang your coat when you destroy the whole earth? Yeah. Mm. Mamela, we got bones to pick and those bones that we're picking understand that they're like me throwing you a bone as a dog anyway that you might repent and realize that until we get Zanghai it's a sense it is not sustainable. Libulele Zahara. I can't say that enough. You've also made my scalp itch and I don't even know why that's a thing. Perhaps all the stress is causing me to overkill it with like some kind of like a hormone that releases to my scalp and makes me itch. I can rant. Maybe by the time I get the one I go itch. Why? Because I have a for it. Back in the day when I was young, like I said, I'm still young, but you took a decade of my life that we shall perpetually keep on raising over and over again because it's just not right, okay? But who cares if something is right or wrong when you're dealing with a whole evil society that does not care about wrong and right and they call right wrong and they call upside down, right way up and so on and so forth. Back in the day when I was a youngster, I had these friends like a good 10, maybe 12 years ago, maybe 13, 14, whatever, back before I got born again and also back before I got stabbed in the back by just about everything that could breathe in my like ecosystem. Mamela. I had this one friend, Chiggy, that I went to this university with, yeah, that was Aja being among the first to get marriaged out of all of us. However, I never was going with this random Chiquita was really struggling. She was having a hard time. So it's like she had just walked into her breakthrough. It's a killer thing story. So you can understand what I want. So I can't tell you I just I don't. I don't what's mm. Wait again, her man, performulang, mara. Actually, acknowledge where you're in the room. Gifilang kari lorang, lorang. Kihalaga lorang. Di doro, di kai di doro. Go and snooze, sister girl. Wait again, count sheep, sleep, and then dream. Because I literally will never pay attention to you again. Abanta mamnya mami na nyitan ngani. Nyabula la wait again ninga baba bula lili di murderer. Lili zwenguli. I can say I can show. Grandchild, I don't even know how anybody survives. I feel as if the South Africa here, am I right now? It's only breathing because there are other races. Because we're not about to abansu. Wait again. Anarchy vibes. I'm just feel like we do. Uh -uh. Self control. Yeah, yeah, live along. Elephant in the room, man. You love them. Goodness gracious, how you adore you some elephants in the reside. And nobody likes them, but you, you, you are a fan of the elephants in the room. You keep on getting people mauled away by lions in your vicinity because you think you can pet a whole wild animal. Mamelang. Hanneke khula mulaifing, except not so much because I was already kind of grown up. It was like varsity days. There was this friend I had at Vids and she was doing whatever. Was, like she was doing etc I was introduced to her by another friend and we all just became fast friends okay cool beans and bananas and in her first year she appeared cool she was gorez not go not on campus she was living um outside of uh like that's yeah she was living in some flats outside of it because she could not afford res at uh, on campus right so this chick was not on scholarship or whatever like parents or parent was paying for her fees um at varsity and then unfortunately the parent got really sick and therefore it became kind of low-key impossible for her to continue studying etc and it became a whole sad case and we had this friend that was um the friend that actually introduced me to her introduced us to her 
um, at the time appeared really caring and yeah she was to a certain extent if anything I was quite surprised by how caring she could be like you know when you have one of those friends that are so wild and out there that you don't think they care about anybody until they start caring about somebody and you're like oh god she's got a side that's got a heart she was one of those yeah she would surprise you like every single day because she kept on displaying that she has abilities to care and that's actually the reason why she grew on me because I thought she was just party friend until she became oh ride or die you, you do ride or die I like that yeah Aish. don't speak too soon in the black community everything needs to have a dead break put on it Gee, like before you speak too soon stop celebrating don't ululate don't throw party like tricks out in the sky do not bomb that funny little party thing that goes poo yeah to celebrate because then character just suddenly changes and it's like but weren't you looking out for this individual guys like if there is somebody in your environment that you are very burdened for burdened if there's somebody in your ecosystem because like goodness why does anybody have to go through so much like oh you just like cry all by yourself because this person is suffering yeah when you're that burdened for a person and then this person stops burdening you like wow hallelujah i don't have to cry anymore it was so hard every time to look at her job oh, it was just so bad but now she's going and i'm crying tears of joy because i no longer have to be so sad about my girls struggles anymore <laughs> oh, oh. and then you don't do that like ha about chung hits a long more life thing anyway so this is like chiquita um, started experiencing some pretty hard knock situations in second year and like it, it looks as though she, it looked as though she would inevitably have to drop out of varsity and enough of me was like oh my goodness like you are gonna be screwed you are gonna be um poor you are gonna go back to the grain that you come from you have to finish your degree so that you can become an accountant so that you can basically be the thing that's going to rescue everything from your village out of like rant no everybody was like no where this chick situation was concerned because she was gonna be the thing that broke out of a grain like you know one of those first ever in the family to go university type thing like hey, Eva Chung, we gotta root for this chick that's what actually south africa gotta root for like to go and grab a person remove them out from obscurity in jefela being a victim of your own circumstance you want the kid that grew up in kukwini you want them to end up living in some three-bedroomed house like that's what's good that's what an economy does to improve its people's lives that's what a good president achieves in the lives of his people that is what a country that has righteous men reigning in it that's why it's celebrated because the righteous men are grab people in poverty and they put them in three bedroomed houses mm. so you know south africa was on a trajectory in the right direction when that girl made it into Vitz university and would ultimately escape the grain of her family that's why he blessing one about to have a right to my life she also used to live violently far away that's why anale gorez okay or at least uh, she used to live in a flat in in in, in Bromfontein over there because she could not just take a taxi and you know go back to Pimville or whatever and like another province or something it was just far where she stayed so we basically were rooting for this friend of ours to be all right and we used to cry with her on some <laughs> and she was Avita Peron and we were Argentina and she was always like don't cry for me Argentina the truth is I never loved you all through my wild days my mad existence i kept my promise don't keep her distance she was a vita peron in the worst way you were always crying for her and she was always like don't cry for me argentina we wanted the best for her but unfortunately her mother got really sick or whatever they became there for challenges her brother was not making enough money situations were, were bad food was even hard to come by like you know her family just meets with horribleness and there was no contingency plan to basically survive the loss of the main breadwinner yeah uh stuff like that happened you guys and we were like on some uh, uh, crying for this chick and the person that was crying the hardest for her was this one other chick okay the one that i thought that was just a party chick the one that we just drink straw rum who am not the mario shallow generally like nothing else deep there and she showed a depth that kind of impressed me i was like hey it looks like if i got some issues i got a shoulder right there like that that's the shoulder that should be a shoulder don't underestimate a book by its cover just because it can grind on the nightclub floor don't mean it can't be a shoulder she she was clearly a shoulder that's what's good and so this chick inspired the rest of us to be shoulders to cry on and so that's how this chick got to adore us okay we were like there for her ride or die when she was having a bit of a rough patch time uh, she also had a boyfriend right that she dated at the time that uh, to sort of kind of took care of her he was like y'all yeah, really supportive and stuff so we liked the guy and what have you she didn't end up with that guy however but you know we're getting to a point here mm, 
type establishment thing. Uh, y'all. Yeah. I then met with my own crappy circumstance. That was second year after all. And I didn't let you guys know that at the end of second year, I had to like forget everything of my dreams because my mom was not paying my fees. Blah blah what what. So I also had to drop out, and now I was on some. I would love that you would cry for me, Argentina. But where are you for me when you left me all through my wild days, my man? Back to the same chick that was out here crying for a poverty stricken friend of ours when her mama was passing away. How are you at, girl? Like, come on, I'm having times that are hard too. I told you, you said, I saw, I said you, I thought you could be a shoulder. Ayo, hey, shoulder, shoulder. Uh, 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 uh. I met with the rough patch and the shoulder ignored me. Ah, how did that even happen? Yo, you're the chick that was like, when everything was falling apart in one friend's life, you were there for her. But now it's falling apart in mine, but you're not here for me? What did that? Black people, we go have a conversation. I'm done with you. But anyway, before I'm entirely done with you, I'm gonna put it out there as to why I'm done with you so you can understand why I'm done with you, that upon me being done with you, you're not gonna have qualms with me being done with you because you're gonna see where I'm coming from because you are in dire need of being done with. Mmm. So Garaba was this like snobbish little girl, like always wearing Donna Karen on campus because my sister used to study overseas and bring me designer clothes and so I looked like I had everything. I looked like a spoiled brat. I spoke English with like a twang. Yeah. You know when you judge a book by its cover, I never used to talk too much about my issues and ever since I was in high school, frankly, whatever issues I might have had at home, nobody really kind of knew about them because like who cares really if I'm trying to be popular. I'm not trying to have everybody crying for me. I've never liked a pity party. So I never raised anything that I endured. And besides, I didn't really come from a poor family. It's just that my mom was kind of negligent. And every so often the negligence, you know, was um shaky for my future. If you know what I mean. So I also needed a shoulder every so often. Especially when things went off the railings. Like, what's good? But like, I wasn't awarded a shoulder. Why? Because, you see, when people are like roaming in these streets with jealousy. Where you're concerned. And then you fall apart. They are suddenly not going to be there for you in a way that they were there for someone that was always suffering that's just the thing with the black community right i wasn't always suffering i was the chachi if you want to call it that not that naked i told you as a kid i was kind of reserved i was very shy i was kind of kept to myself however i wasn't suffering if you know what i mean yeah and when people are low-key looking at you with binoculars from a distance on some Oh, again, long I'm sand I'll shut back at S I'll fit up on my pair low-key giving you cold vibes And you grace me with the cold shoulder When lover I look at you, you think I was her Cause you think you're Adele on that day mm, When people pass you low-key cold shoulder but you don't know You gon' find out when days are dark You gon' know You gon' know that you weren't really sure about that cold shoulder But now you got to confirm me now you got to confirm that the cold shoulder was a cold shoulder now you got to confirm that the day you came to school and greeted your girl and she passed you shade that she actually was passing you shade and not so much stressed out because she was about to write an exam now you find out that a person has been holding you in a particular space in jefela snarks you know what i mean oh no sure you know those chicks that pass you a shade they give you attitude every so often how huh? boo huh? When you talk, they act like they're not, they're not listening. What a, what a fish paste. Act as if though your words don't make no sense. Act, act as if though you, you, you don't, you're not influential in any stead. Yeah, you know when friends are like that. And then you just think, you know, it's just a bad day. And because you're like desperate for love and attention and friendship, you just write out friends that don't make no change. Yeah, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about, you guys. You would know. You would know. Oh, nobody lying to me. Come on. You know it's relatable. Anyway, whatever. Mm. Even though I'm as relatable as I am. Moving on. Let's just like progress with this whole thing. I guess I'm like a homo na homo na. Backstabbing has its benefits. Because then you actually stop giving two hoots. You stop giving a shoot. Like, you know, I, I don't care. No more. To be loved and embraced. Because now I realize that don't nobody out here in the black community care about nobody. Alright, cool. Mm. So you find out when you're going through rubbish and more trash, okay, that, oh, snap, so that attitude that I picked up on those particular day, this day, this day, and that day was real. Because here it is that I'm suffering and I'm not being awarded the same level of empathy. I'm not being awarded the same level of care. Here it is that I've also, I'm losing also my ability to continue to go to school. Like, one of our girls had also lost her ability to go to school. Do you know what I mean? Um, and at that sec second day, I think, she, that was basically threatening to be her last year at Vits. And she looked like, if she didn't get like, proper, just it, like you qualify to go to university, you want to graduate, you want to get out of the grain of your family's poverty, but you're going to be forced to just 
take some call center job or we are seven zero scan a macrosa at pick and pay because somebody in your family that was paying your fees is dying or has passed away it's a sad sad sorry state it's a sad sorry case but in the black community there's a whole bunch of wannabe entrepreneurs who are philanthropic a whole bunch of wannabe what do you call this thing like charitable randos eh they want to be viewed as ones who are into altruistic activity insofar as they can keep whoever it is that they are giving really beneath them insofar as they can keep whoever it is that they are awarding with charitable provision remain beneath them that's the black strategy that's how they get to look like philanthropists that's how they get to look like altruistic giving rando like you know generous randos in these streets they get to look good by keeping people beneath them and then granting them hand-me-downs but if somebody ever displays that they can be bigger than that and in and of themselves be empowered to be a giver instead of a taker yeah that's when they start to have beef on some note but i get to be the only entrepreneur i get to be the only philanthropist i get to be the only altruistic like tycoon please Okay, you, however, need to keep on being the one to whom I'm giving hand me downs, right? My say, my mama, pair of Nike sneakers. I've only worn them three times. I'm gonna be the one that's always giving you near on new Nike sneakers because, frankly, I don't quite appreciate that you must go out there now and not only buy your own Nike sneakers but also like buy new sneakers for other people. I'm the one here with that that's my trend it's my trajectory it's my thing please don't take it don't don't steal my thunder don't take my thunder my thunder my thunder don't take my thunder I need to away oh wow I said don't take my thunder really that's what we're doing Mm. well i mean if you're all you're not going to sharpen one another as iron sharpens iron uh then i'm sorry get out of the room because then on that day you don't qualify as an iron sharpening thing you don't qualify as an altruistic thingy my bobby you're not a philanthropist on that day you're a charlatan you're a fluke and a fake you are not the real deal you're not authentic you're a counterfeit booby price that's you booby trap it's what you do mm. i came to learn that this like thunder stealing random uh was not necessarily careful for my particular sorrow when i endured it similar to the sorrow of the other female that we were out here looking at like she's a vita peron don't cry for me my frenzy the truth is i never left you all through my wild days my mad existence i kept my I promise don't keep your distance but i'm happy to go and visit the poor chick even in the blazies upon being displaced from school but you don't come see me in the blazy girl i'm in the blazy now hanging out in these dusty streets of soweto smoking some cigarettes when i ain't supposed to be doing no such thing as that drinking shandy mixing beer and sprite just to get a little high because i'm suffering and thinking about my own thoughts i ain't got nobody i ain't got no job girl be there for me be there will you be there michael jackson will you be there and they were like no sorry how about it why because garabo i got to see that you can be that snobs at borang's a superfluous small life thing i got to see that you could one day thunderously climb above me i got to see you be a whole snob and everything so i'm sorry seeing as you've got potential to one day be the giver that does not need to be given anything i'm just going to do everything in my power to keep you lowly now that you are lowly so that you never ever get to be what i am don't take my thunder my thunder my thunder don't take my thunder i'm like yeah girl i didn't even know i thought there was more than enough lecharima to go around for all of us i mean after all it is manufactured by god who ex nihilo creates gifts so if the lord gives you thunder girl he can give me two thunder we can all have thunder we're in this thunderous business together we're in these two gaira the thunder is going to gaira look at all these peals of thunder in the black community all giving to other people so they can also become thunder and she was like no i'm gonna be the unitary thunder strike in the sky i'm sorry we're not bringing a whole rainstorm here just a threatening blizzard really Oh, Drizilla.
when we're in dire need of thunderstorms as a shower or because as a famine you're just gonna be insist on a drizzle that's what we're doing one little drop that car and then it's over just like that ah um tam ya ma ga furum um tam ya ma ya pesum um tam ya ma ga furum tam ya ma ya pambili um tam ya ma ya bula la la em kat kwe ni ngoba ga funi lightning strike ya kita alright si abona Mm. Wait again. But what about we're done? Like I've been saying it for a minute, but then again, whatever. I get a holly oodling. Marajaka Hariago Rapture, right Samaya. We're going home in the sky. Uh little mamela says a lisi lomura ho little chile meno I too as we ling looking like bugs bunny. Hona lero le mos poko. Mururusa ho le cause o latle ketsuiki is it not thing you baby sang eh when you stop salfa eh mm eh MSM. You know when you stop taking MSM your hair then goes thin again and you are just looking like uh like Jada Pinkett and your man be slapping some man cause your hair don't grow. Mm Hmm. Yeah. That's the running mood on our own cuz you're no longer drinking sulfur like uh, supplements. Yeah, that's on that day when you're going to be listening to the Carabo. The girl's going to be speaking, she's going to be like, "Why's not listening then though? Why's not listening? I still listen back then." Oh no, snappy you do that. That made a mistake. Now look at that she gone in the rapture. Ooh. And I almost stayed behind. Oh man. What a stupid man was I. What a stupid girl was this. Ah oh, man, I don't going to be so typical black. Eh. Hey. Mamela, listen up, you randos all left behind. The chakile le roli le purple over here because bahu dumpi le over and above le lorle le roli la ting haliratani. You don't like each other, and that's why our dance long here. Top of that, you love your witchcraft. It's like thunder strike. Yeah, that's what you use your thunder for. You think you're Zeus? Grr. Just go and defile and strike the back of a friend, and next thing she's on the floor in the ground, and then you have the brazen audacity to attend the funeral. Le chadi mando mame. Hmm. This chick, the same one that was out here, like mourning and crying, basically rolling on the floor with sorrow, over a chick that was always lonely. I missed her. She was a friend that was always lonely, and because she was always lonely, she was happy being the rich kid that she was to basically be all altruistic towards her. But when Karabo went through the same thing, Megu too late and jam guys. It's not your crickets. Be looking around the streets of Soweto. It's all dusty. I'm literally suicidal. I'm almost dying. Ain't nobody there for me. Not a friend from high school, no one from varsity, nobody was there for me when I was going through the biggest crap in my life to a point where I nearly committed suicide. It was only when I rose up again that I contacted them and they were like, "Oh, you back in action?" Um, so what are you doing next weekend? I should have known better. Like you got to know when to ditch some people, but you know when you have to ditch a whole entire community, then on that days like it becomes kind of rough to walk away cuz in gotta get to have a and some fella if it lets him more. Mm. Listen, all right, this chick done abandoned me, but that that was not the 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 the, the first thing that hinted to me. Crenshaw, just the sorrow of the black soul. Who always a long time got to any to like proper. You get to a point of murder. We say gang murder she wrote, murder she wrote, murder she wrote. Yeah, let's go to the bullet. But to tip a girl, you're not a mad. Who na listen to puma fat? Say somebody standing over. Get up and leave it. Take my police. Someone, please call nine one one. Cause le baga ibulele umganwa kenyes bamu. Kotwa machata wazi hina ni bando mnyaman bono munti aboda upodi le crenshab. Eh black people. Ain't no justice up in the old community. Aye, I'm crying. But anyway, I'm eventually gonna get to a point. Mm. Yeah, that was like the first infraction that this chick done did. The first strike, like strike one. I was like, eh, hey, hey, I thought you were the kind of chick that I could find comfort in, but it turns out when days are dark, you is few, girl. When days are dark, you is few. You was a friend that is few. I see you. When days are dark, you is few. Cause when days are dark, friends are few. Yeah, I. Mm. Fine. That was the first observation I made. Godwa, Godwa. Kiharika Teresa Morena Jesso. Kiharika Ratang Mudimu. Cause Mudimu wa Rataha. Mudimu ki Mudimu. Hallelujah. Mm. This cheeky. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, on us would lay like no man's business. Somehow, somewhere, lightning strike thunder le chadima. Okay, la mudimu mara, right? Jesus is thunder. Mm. The Lord knows how to love some people. Lanza basamurati. Mm. Some 
somehow this chick, she had to ultimately drop out of Vits. She couldn't continue with Vits. She had to find a job and be the by the, by the, by the amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Um, grace of God. Mm. By the amazing grace of God, she got a job, uh, but she could not continue at Vits, so she ended up enrolling at UNISA. So she was working while studying, right? And hallelujah, let's also praise the Lord, you know, congratulations and celebrations. You make the world believe you're happy as I am. Yeah, okay, uh, she graduated. She did. She got her, uh, her degree, ultimately through UNISA so she grounded and and really did the time and because this cheeky was real close real tight like she was so supportive of her and her plight and her cause and all that sorrow like all of us were stung by her pain and when she got better and when she got a job we were all like <laughs> oh thank you Jesus <laughs> okay nobody was saying thank you Jesus because ain't nobody actually really loved Jesus then but like we were thanking God you know what I mean like you know how the world loves to thank God like just throw it in Jefela out of their mouth like it means anything mm. we were grateful to the powers on high that she was okay because when somebody that you care about that you all have been crying for finally is like okay now like it's not that deep and that bad anymore it doesn't look like she's gonna be stuck and stranded in that grain forever that she came from there is re there's relief in everybody there is relief in everybody I don't know how many times as a black person I have enjoyed relief when yet another black person finally got out of whatever rut made me burdened for them and it was just so uncomfortable to be burdened and now I wasn't burdened anymore cuz but chill and so I was also freed from my burden because they were free mm. this shit got a job and it was a regular job that did not really require any experience you know like what happened with me the same thing that happened with me happened with her like I was made to drop out of varsity as well and after six months i got a learnership at liberty life so i was relieved for me hey yo why is nobody else relief for me hey please be relief for me i got a learnership oh yeah no make too little with me it was just quiet nobody was celebrating that i was okay again except for my little cousin and her boyfriend i had one little support crew really and they kept me like going for a minute during that time they were my juice and my fuel so when i got into learnership they were like oh, finally i was not just sitting at home gathering dust i was so worried oh man like wow celebrate good time yeah but in the black community people stab each other in the back so badly that even good people get turned so that same cousin got turned with her boyfriend it's like a shem Hey son, party buddy, I've got a pinch in my heart now. Like, we're not doing this. I don't like singing. It makes me cringe. Mm. Nobody was celebrating for me except for those two. Uh, however, this chick, when she got a job, when she was okay now again, it was like, whew, at least she does not have to suffer so much. And because this chick has such a strong burden for um, this chick that was really struggling, uh, she negotiated with her parents where she used to stay because she was like some rich kid. She negotiated with her parents to uh give an uh, what is this uh, an apartment like she lived in one of those big houses that have servants quarters that are quite decent like quite decent in Gati, it's like a one bedroom apartment yeah baldwin group if you know what i mean like if at all it was not on a bigger property it would be quite a decent one bed apartment yeah like a, a garden cottage that looks really good on a rich man's property so she negotiated for this chick to live in that garden cottage Kohabona with reduced rates by her parents because she had this like strong bird and she's like mom it's my friend and I'm worried she lives really far and you know she could just got a job um at this other place and she's gonna have to travel from this like far away place to just to get to Joburg and it's gonna be like every day like it's not oh, imagine and the parents were like okay fine whatever don't scream don't yell don't shout um yeah she can live here so she ended up living at the same property as this girl uh, as, as one of our friends uh, in in what do you call this thing in the garden cottage for like reduced rates so she was able to pay rental and everything and then she met a man she was like i'm in love now and to my love because she broke up with the one that she was with at varsity so that chick had always just had really rather die boyfriends like yeah anyway so she met a guy in that same job uh that she was working and you know she was striving striving to get her degree she eventually did get her degree etc but throughout the time when she was studying part-time while also working on that property so we all used to like party together still and they would go back home to the same place blah blah water water fish paste etc mm. 
and remember i also got out of that rut right and out of the rut of my own grain of nothingness i got out of it and so having escaped myself now we were all celebrating good times come on even though nobody had my back like yo why you why what's with a different remained why why the different remained you why didn't you treat me better too why didn't you also come and cry with me why the different remained eh? anyway I, I i acted like i didn't see that y'all and treat me differently when i was going through a lot but that's the thing i was treated differently because i came from okayness and displayed that i have a future of greatness and then fell and so competitive souls were like Mutlohele down there and I wasn't supported but a person that came from a grain of poverty a person that came from nothingness essentially when she went through a lot the level of support I mean the level of humanitarian aid <laughs> <laughs> the level of humanitarian aid that was given that friend of ours was astronomical it was admirable frankly it is something to herald and enjoy as worthwhile to praise the bible says whatever is good whatever is pure and if in philippians 4 verse i believe 8 to 9 whatever is pure whatever is good whatever is just whatever is commendable whatever is excellent whatever is is worthy if there be any excellence if there be if if there be any worthiness of praise think on these things yeah that was something that was praiseworthy and so therefore worthy of us thinking on it okay mm, that's what was good over there top establishment thing Mm. and uh we were glad they were giving her humanitarian aid for crying out loud it's like she was a palestinian in gaza and the un was out here like having her back but hamas was out here also stealing the the the, the food aid so it's like what, whatever's going on mm. that's what's up with that one minute are the ones who ah okay yeah you guys mm, this chick was out here being given humanitarian aid of monumental proportions and it boosted her it jol it, it jolted her along it um basically acted as a bridge you know in to get to a place where to, to, to transition her to the environment that she needed to get to um apart from that humanitarian aid that she received from us like i, I find it funny that i call it humanitarian aid but that's exactly what it was apart from her getting that humanitarian aid not never not from us so much it was from the, the other the, the one chick the rich kid among us uh, apart uh, apart from that humanitarian aid she would never have been okay none of ever right she needed to be helped out in that way like in the worst way she had her back and that's why i respected her so much until i like realized okay hey girl you are partial <laughs> you are partial why aren't you helping me because i'm in those shoes too girl like i'm a shoe suffering but it's okay it's all right it's all right i came out of it but like you were not there for me girl why mm, she was was all partial she was a respecter of persons that way but it's cool gave that chick humanitarian aid and that humanitarian aid made a massive difference huge it made a huge difference in her life um because it gave her a place to stay it gave her um what do you call this thing it gave her um, what's the thing what's the word that i'm looking for a foundation and stability thank you stability that's what i'm looking for it gave her stability a stability that she lacked and we were worried that she was never gonna be okay do you understand what i'm saying but then she became okay and we were like oh thank god for that chick and her family that is well off that was able to help our friend along this is what friendship is about i completely ignored that she ignored my case you know um but i yeah whatever like you know when you just trying to brush stuff off you don't see it for what it is but now i do I'm all grown up and I've now been stabbed in the back by <laughs> that whole crew of friends. Like, they've stabbed me in the back. Uh, but I'm trying to help you guys understand that witchcraft begets witchcraft. Or backstabbing begets backstabbing. Like, you know the whole saying, hurt people hurt people. A level of rubbish in Jefela. Yeah, uh, this uh, this chick Orna, Orna Sutlele, that ultimately came out alright on the other side. Ended up hurting even me. Because, you know, hurt people hurt people. But I'm about to explain a story um, out here. That you might gauge or keep walking. This is really a lament about Zahara's death. Um and i want you guys to gauge rightly that la m zanzi south africa the country kupeli let's over right you are judged essentially it's literally like there's nothing left here like juvovovo start car ain't going nowhere like motor on a boat it's not starting you keep pulling it and it's not starting like it's gone done however perhaps you might black folk in particular repent after the rapture has happened upon realizing that absent of the lord taking the babies home 
the body of Christ will many you were gonna finish us off it's written in God's Word in Matthew 24 towards the end over there and I know Matthew 24 is a passage that parallels the book of Revelation and really speaks of Jacob's trouble but you can in some some formal way or sort of steer yeah, etc sort of kind of applied to just generalistic things that apply also to the Gentiles because of the fact that it is so incredibly telling of um, what happens in an ecosystem when you when God does not salvage his people on time um, they ultimately get destroyed they perish they die they pass away they cease to exist um do you understand what i'm saying absent of the lord intervening in certain ecosystems we will not be okay and in matthew 24 it is written and you can also parallel this to 125 psalms psalm 125 matthew 24 at the very end it says that um what is this no, if at all it was not for god cutting the days of trouble short no flesh would be saved no flesh would be saved and by no that is a ubiquitous term speaking to practically literally everybody including Bazalwane, including christians nobody would get saved if god did not cut the days of the tribulation short because if you endure christians through too much sorrow and suffering with this body of death of theirs that is restricted um even with the holy spirit they will struggle to maintain holiness so nobody would live eternally if god did not restrain how far evil goes he gives relief to suffering people because absent of them of him giving them relief no flesh would be saved they would never be okay they would never come up for it they would never rise they would struggle to stay holy in Psalm 125 it is written that the scepter of the wicked will not be allotted to the land uh, of the righteous and unless the righteous should incline their hearts to do wrong so whenever the Lord does not spare people from perpetuated lingering non-stopping evil at the ends of hands of their uh, oppressors um those people would turn against god every last christian on the earth would end up hating god if the lord did not ultimately end their suffering if god did not restrain them he does not give us so much self-control that we would basically become invincible like him that's not his intention it is that he might rescue us in our moment of weakness when he is strong when we are weak he is strong when um we are what do you call this when when we are found wanting the lord is entirely and utterly and comprehensively uh what do you call this able to basically meet us halfway if not all the way there right that's how it is that god operates uh so uh what is this uh, this this thing that you are doing to in the black community to each other absent of the lord intervening on behalf of those that feel exasperated by it they would also in and of themselves become so evil so wicked that they would no longer be survivable themselves insufferable as well would they become they would in and of themselves become menaces to society and so there would be no flesh saved no one would live no one would have eternal life if the lord does not cut those days short no flesh would be saved africans south africans in particular black ones no flesh in your communities would be saved if the lord did not cut the days short of your rampant reign of terror what what you do to each other no flesh would be saved hurt people hurt people a lot of people get to the point where they are afflicting other human beings because they are afflicted they cannot stand how others treat them and out of bitterness of soul they end up hurting others i used myself as an example as well where it is that i spoke about how it is that i'm struggling with love forgiveness things that are imperative if at all you're going to walk with jesus do you understand what i'm saying and yet i have been put in a position to basically say on the rooftops bold statements like i don't like you i hate witches because the pain that i've been endured under by just defeatism backstabbing and witchy blacks yeah has put me in a sort of kind of hateful state the bible says that no one who hates his brother uh is of god because you cannot be of god and hate your brother and here it is that i'm sitting where i'm sitting where i can't stand black people so i'm bordering essentially i'm not even being godly and the lord says that if at all he does not cut the days short of my suffering even i wouldn't be saved no flesh would be saved the lord perseveres the saints all the way to the very end so if at all your wickedness is so exorbitant that christians take matters into their, into their own hands and they become so embittered that they struggle to be godly to turn the other cheek to do what is holy to not cast the first stone when you graduate us to a point of that situation mm, god is just gonna have no rapture us yo he would much rather since he is jealous for me since he is jealous for us he is jealous for me amen since the lord is jealous for us he's not going to let us in death like get taken away by the tsunami of so much attrition pressure so much abuse that we will end up sinning against him mm, in a way that is displeasing and therefore displays that we are not of him we will you will know them by their fruit there is a holiness without which no one will see god so therefore if we we stop walking or we if we are bordering or skating on the thin ice of not having that holiness with which we then will see god the lord before he will any day now allow us to lose that holiness he will take us out of here before we are finished off mm. 
yeah so i'm like a classical case of somebody that was just so sweet oh God, or you could just pinch me on the cheek and now i'm not just slapping some people with a very feisty attitude i got like a whole bunch of uh, you know fangs they're just grooving into people's necks like i'm a vampire and i need spice gale i'm becoming calloused i'm becoming cold i'm kind of frosty um i'm i'm kind of homicidal too yeah and i just bought a die dead to that die i say that a lot why because you've put me in a position to hurt some people because i've been hurt and my situation let's just not underestimate long suffering over here it's been going on for almost a decade a decade i mean goodness gracious if god does not cut my days short of the sorrow i wouldn't be saved i would literally end up walking away from the one true god i need relief and apart from relief being given me god will therefore net not on that day prove himself as god all right he said he will never leave nor forsake me and if at all he does not give me relief he is not god for he is not giving me relief i've cast my bread upon the waters and after many days it look it appears as if though it's not coming back to me I have cast my my burden my, my my what is this my cares on him for he cares on me my burdens on him I have given him all of my woes and my anxieties and here it is that he's not caring for me so I mean I guess you're not proving yourself as God so atheism I guess I'm about to join it any minute now that would never happen why because the Lord God Almighty is gonna cut the days of my sorrow short so those of you who are in this like strangulation posture where you're like your hands are around my neck I know this is what's gonna happen like I told you hologram much I'm gonna disappear I'm gonna disappear in other words I'm literally gonna go in the sky and then you're gonna be like oh mm, snap what oh man and then it's like, it's like scratching your heads why weren't you scratching your heads when I was still here so you deserve to go through the tribulation eating your bread with carefulness and drinking your water with astonishment you deserve to do that you deserve the famine that's gonna ravage you and no, not the lipstick. Oh, out your papa suffering now. We're from Kwashi Yogor. Ingati, you are a famine ravaged child in the Horn of Africa. You deserve it. Okay? Mm. Why? Because you did this to me. And in our way, suffering from Kwashi Yogor, rickets, scurvy, whatever might be the malnutrition of a choice. If at all you give your life to the Lord, the Lord is then also going to give you grace by cutting the tribulation day short for your sake. For the sake of the elect of God, the Lord will cut those days short. Otherwise, no flesh would be saved. That's what it's written in Matthew uh, 24. Right on. Uh, so I'm trying to help you guys understand. If at all this nonsense of yours, you don't repent, the rapture is inevitably going to happen because God is not going to let the black community worth of Christians just apostatize in their violent numbers because you are as defeatist against them as you are. He's not about to go and let East South Africa, that is a professing country that calls itself Christian, lose a massive chunk of the black population of Christians just because Lipogi just because you are literally trying to kill each other and then obliterate one another send one another into eternity leave one another in a state of utter oblivion jesus on high is not that guy let's just put it out there to do whatever to a point of it's not happening okay so i'm warning you to repent or literally perish because before jesus christ will allow karabo to fall off the bandwagon he let you go Ooh, that's gonna dive into sheol you're the one who hungry look like washioko and scurvy maybe even go to the ocean not ocean to the river call it damon because you like all of these funny little rituals of yours where you're always going damon i will meet you at the river i will meet you at the river yeah in a demonic ritual and then have a brain eating amoeba go inside your nose travel to your brain and just kind of eat away at your brain and then you pass away that's what you need to happen to you Jesus is gonna do that first before he will allow you to strangle Karazi to death. If at all I'm not planned on to become a martyr, I have an go tokafala because people killed me because Gimzalwani. But I'm not going to live in a constant state of attrition until I cave in or give up because that's just not what Bible prophecy said will ultimately happen to Christians. The Lord cuts the days short for our sake. Otherwise, we incline towards evil. Now that you've gotten that in your general grill, you entitled son of a gun. Mamela. Okay. Batu babantu. What you do, Ibulai Lezahara. And if at all you didn't seize hostilities against people in your lives, um, more Zaharas would drop in the ground and stuff. Just a plonk. One, two, three, four. You become a thumb war. Bah, underneath the thumb of Jabu, Temba, Pinky. And Renee, like, stop. Ew. 
Die dirty and drag. If you like a guy now, galo jiwaki brain eating amoeba. Just know where you're just a rebrum, and then there be no more you. Olo ira frontal lobotomy. Ke amoeba. If you like you need that because at this point, otawe. Anyway. So, Cheriana, this chiquita like lady friend person, no longer such a thing as that, yeah, became diabolical because yet another diabolical being became diabolical against her. Oh, y'all, with your diabolicalism. Ukrela. Mara, not before telling you stories or to in the tribulation as you're busy drinking your water with astonishment. Mamela, the same chick, or to see saying this chick to get a bolster in life. Now, here it is that this chiki, almost jigets, here's this chick now, right? She is now working her job, she's paying rent, she's living in Johannesburg, she's getting her degree, she ultimately did get her degree, she meets a man after the other one and her broke up, blah blah, whatever, life moved on, okay? She falls in love and like, ooh, blah, blah, blah. and then this guy is like, this boyfriend is like, will you marry me? Upeezy, I just need to be serenading a lady. I'm some girl, me, I feel you, me, I take you forever, oh, eh? The guy that she meets at the job where she's working, they date for some months and then like very quickly, like I speak, as I'm gonna now, he proposed marriage. Yeah, they fell in love and this chick is like, whoa, I'm in love. And the guy's like, whoa, me too. And they're like, oh, together. Right. Mm. They fall in love and this guy proposes marriage and everything just happens like at a speed of lightning. And God was looking around and some, whoa, 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 whoa. Look how the Lord done flipped this chick's narrative. Wow, man, like, whoa. Okay, that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, this this chick went from basically look like victim of her circumstance, life is over, to we are Sebenza, she's getting a degree and now she's getting married. Ah, and here it is that Umganwaike, Awamgani, right? Also, Naya, she's getting her own. Naya, she's just gotten a job somewhere. Wonkumuntu is doing their own thing. It's yours now that have progressed, okay? And we are all just kind of okay. We're kind of growing, stride to stride. We're moving up and up and up. Where's Alang? Goodness gracious, guys, there's a power cut. No, I cannot uh, deal. I cannot deal. Okay, I need to go and find out when Zalang is And then upon discovering where Zalang is going, I will then come here and finish this part. I need to work out. I cannot have this happen to me.